Alrighty, I have a one versus one match for you to cast right now. This happened a little spontaneously, so that gets me keen. Spawning in at the bottom right, playing as a substrate, we have Kinlock. And his opponent will be Pethodyne as the red PHC. So we are seeing both factions, the PHC and the substrate. And this is on quite a large map. One of my favorite maps, Italia. The design is that there's a relatively short rush distance to your opponent's base. However, the middle is completely devoid of resources. There is nothing in the center. Now, there is the two Tyrannium generators, though. Somewhat near the center. Those You get extra income when you hold them, and also there's a, like a wind timer if you hold them for long enough. But the sides are definitely more important for all of those, all of those resources. So you have to balance the fact that the sides have the resources, but also you don't want to have the middle completely undefended because then you may get just your base rushed. Or the closest thing to a base rush on, on, on a map this of this size. There's also the fact that the middle allows you to rotate between the, the middle and the center. Let, let me change mouse again. So, <laughs> yeah, ch change mouse may sound weird out of context. I, I have two mice. One is my mice that I use because I really, really like it. The other m mice, other mouse, is one that I don't like as much, but it has a mouse wheel that isn't broken, so I can look, I can zoom in and out with a mouse wheel that's functional. That's nice. Anyway. Yeah, you got to balance the, the fact that you don't want to put all of your effort on, on onto the sides, because then you can get flanked, you can get cut off. There's all kinds of bad things that can happen for you. But anyway, we are seeing the players get the, the regions as fast as they can. Quick uh, factory there, quick assembly. That's really how you play the early game. You want to get as many units as you can early on to start capturing those regions, start clearing those creeps, get those amplifiers, or the, sorry, the, the extractors, and then later the, the amplifiers, but, but for now, the extractors. There is a bit of decisions though in terms of where you go. What are you prioritizing? Are you going more metal, going more radioactives? How much do they go for units as opposed to economy? You can start investing in quantum relays and amplifiers very early on, or you can be a bit more aggressive. You can also then go for air units, try to get some, some air rushing, air harassment. There's also the option to do harassment with orbital abilities. You can invest in like the orbital fabricator or the gateway, which unlocks units such as the, the saboteurs, the sentries, the incursion. All of those allow you to, to drop units um, anywhere on the map that you have vision. Which can be nice on a, a cutoff location like this. Because if we look at the map, that cuts off the entire right side of the map. So you definitely want to, at some point, you want to start putting defenses down here. A little basic turret, anti-air turret, all you need really. Because those incursions or the, the incursion type abilities, they're not very good. Um, against base defenses, so you can you can defend them if you're prepared. But if you're un, unprepared, then yeah, they can wreak havoc. So you just got to be aware of what is the really brutal cutoffs. Whenever there's a cutoff like that, and even on the on the right side too, like here, that's the same thing. You can it cuts off a lot of regions, and that's a triple radioactives region. This one also is a triple, so definitely worth getting some cheap defenses. Not right away, but. You know, sooner rather than later, let's say. Well, Pethodyne is going for the Orbital Fabricator, so that tells me he wants to go for some harassment nonsense. Some tomfoolery. Some cheeky shenaniganry with those drops. That being said, though, he's out of Quanta. He must have used it on weapons damage, I would say. And the the, uh, the Quantum, the Orbital, sorry, the Quantum upgrade, you get the global, global, um resource us uh, global damage on all your units and all your defenses and even your abilities too so he can't really make use of this not until he actually gets more quanta which he will now so i kind of wonder why he rushed that fabricator out unless i missed him actually use it but no there's there's no red dots on the mini map i it doesn't look like he used any ability abilities with that so anyway it doesn't matter having it it's not that expensive the investment is, you know, the quanta as much as the structure itself to deploy the units. 
Uh, I think it unlocks... Well, unlock some stuff too, but I don't remember what it is anyway. Should know that, but I don't. Forgive me. So we see uh, Kinlock already sending out some drone hives. They're very, very good at clearing the map. Uh, they're going to clear the, the middle, got the Terinium generator, and those generators are extra well defended. They can be quite tough to clear, uh, which isn't good for him. But at the same time, we see that Perthodyne already has several cruisers on the field. And he has an Apollo, which is an anti-air cruiser, able to splash those drones down, which makes it pretty defenseless. So the Athena can come in, finish it off. Just trying to retreat now, but his units are on the chase. Actually, may get the, uh, no, the healer. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, anyway, so a lot of units on the map here. What is the response from Kinlock? He needs to have something. Just a lot of drone hives. Now, drone hives are a good unit, but... This is a this composition is like the perfect one to deal with with drone hives. Apollo's to shoot down the drones and the Athena's just to, to finish them off to do to, to the damage. Um, income's pretty similar, so that you know they're, they're capping at a, at a similar speed. We may start seeing some skirmishes around the the base resources or sorry the the side resources like like here around here especially. I really love this defensive line that we have from Pethodite. He's building multiple Smarties, he's getting a Sentinel, and that basically prevents any little counter attacks. Uh, you're gonna have to push through full force. Maybe use some siege cruisers to just snipe those away from a distance. Drone hives are pretty good against base defenses though, but y y y if you can avoid it, you don't wanna throw units against base defenses. It's not very cost efficient. And again, let's see how well this does. Five drone hives. This is, this is, going to be costly either way. Even if Kinlock manages to win this one, but I'm pretty sure his army will get crushed. Yeah. Yeah. He really needed to have other units by now. He really needed to get some some cruiser destroyers of his own. Like get some destructors out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The maulers. Like now. So this is better. The maulers will will fare much better versus those. Those uh, the cruisers, there's everything that he has here, or he can go for his own frigates. Athena's pretty weak versus frigates. Oh, a bit of a skirmish here. Okay, he's picked off the engineer that was just about to finish building a Smarties. That's a good little snipe there, but again, the Athena and the Zeus combination will clean this one up. Get the Apollo, but that's not gonna be much of a big deal there. Now, there isn't any base defenses, so this can all get counterattacked pretty easily. Pethodyne starting to secure the Terinium. Pretty long Terinium victory on this map. I think it's like 5,000, so that's not going to really be uh, a, a viable way of winning. Um, although the pressure can build up, but it, you do get 5% bonus resources uh, for every generator you held, so those things will always come in handy. Despite that, the income is pretty even. We, we do have an amplifier being built here. We've already got amplifiers. Uh, in some of these these important regions. Perhaps Pethodide has the same as well. No, no sign of any amplifiers. Okay, so I think that's sort of the why there's the equilibrium is that Pethodide has extra income from the Terinium generators, but then Kinlock has the extra income from the amplifiers. This is a good army here. However, he won't be able to push through this. Even artillery posts are being built. So that's going to be a good way of, of discouraging any uh, attack along here. We'll get some nice little damage. We must see that the artillery shells are raining down. A little scout craft there. Pethodyne makes sure that the, the coast is clear. The units can advance. Okay, we're going to see an engagement here. Army's a little bit out of position. Deciding to pull back now. Uh, now going to be re-engaging. Putting down a serpentine turret down. Uh, just quite out of range, unfortunately. Pethodyne now wanting to retreat, sees this much larger army. The problem with retreating is that once units get within attack range, they do take them out pretty fast. Yeah, a little indecisive, I think. Reinforcements have arrived. This is a pretty good army. Nemesis cruisers have a lot of burst damage with that railgun. The king looks outnumbered. Yeah, he needs to consolidate. He does have some good defenses here. Ooh, that's uh, sentries I hear. 
He's found an engineer that's building a amplifier, but a serpentine turret will defend against those quite easily. Yeah, unfortunately having some units out of position here, but these pulverizers will hold the line. It's just a matter of can those those artillery cruisers siege them down. Map is continuing to be taken by Pethodyne. It's looking very strong on the map. Is there anything behind this for Kinlock? He's going for some aircraft. We see some punishers in the sky. But otherwise it's just an economy focus with a lot of amplifiers. But we are seeing amplifiers now also being built from Pethodyne. That will make up and that'll um, put him in a good position. Yeah, the left side's going to fall. This position's pretty strong, but there's a lot of regions behind that. Okay, pushing through the defenses here. The pulverizers are very tough, and they have high damage. They're great defenses versus those cruisers. Also, a retributed dreadnought is being built about halfway done. There's only a single Artemis artillery cruiser, so it'll take a long time to go through these defenses. Also, Punisher's in the sky, so they can take out whatever's left and, and what's out of range of this, but no, he goes too far, runs into the line of pulverizers unfortunately, you needed to siege that from a distance. So that retributor I think is going to be the the game plan here for Kinlock, try to push out, try to get the tritium generators. Though it is an interesting decision, well, what do you do here? Do you go straight for the generators or do you go for a flank? Do you go for the, the income? More pulverizers here which is very nice. These regions uh, both have amplifiers. That's, that's where the bulk of the radioactive's income is coming from. And that's generally the, the more difficult resource to get. Or at least more important things cost a lot more radioactives. This army is completely sandwiched. We just see a lot of cruisers on the map. A lot of cruisers for Pethodyne. Kinlock not having many of his own, but we'll have that Retributor. And consolidating as well is good. If he could try to push out a little bit, that'll help him also. And this is just no man's land at this point. Yeah, the army's cleaned up. So that Dreadnought must be done. It's, it is completed now. And he's no longer building a Dreadnought, so... Let's see what he goes for. Pethodyne, on the other hand, continuing to pump out cruisers. Five armories, all of which are churning them out. So we're going to see a lot of the cruisers on the map. And they are faster than the Dreadnought. Definitely less tough, however. Also, the Dreadnoughts, they level up. They get abilities and, and bonuses that they can they get from combat. So, if it gets to level 5, it gets even tougher. It gets, depends what upgrades you choose. You can choose between generally offensive or defensive or support abilities uh, for that the Dreadnought. They're not like manual or casting. They're kind of like auto automatic passive bonuses or, or automatic abilities that, that trigger. Um, so you don't have to micro them, it's not really the point of the game. But this is a tough unit. There is mainly Athenas, and they're not bad against the Retributor. Nemesis is much better though, because they had the armor piercing, and they had that high burst damage too. Sending uh, lone units to get picked off just means you're getting free experience to the Retributor, so you want to try to avoid that. Pushing out now as well, so that's good. There is, however, a secondary line of defenses. So far there's only Smarties, and they're pretty weak, so they can get cleaned up, but if more of them get built, that could be bad news. Now we are seeing a retreat. That's very clever. Could consolidate his army. Get more nemesis cruisers behind this. That's very, very good. We want to just get a big blob of, of cruisers. And then when that happens, he can just burst it down. Especially if he gets more and more nemesis. <laughs> Nemesi. Nemesis cruisers. And he's actually putting nemesis three at a time. So he's going to get a lot of nemesis very fast. And that makes me fear for this retributor. There is a, some supporting units though. And there is also a mobile nullifier that will disable uh, orbital abilities from being deployed in that area. We are seeing now a Barrager, that's an upgraded Smarty. We're also seeing a Sentinel, so this this position is about to be un impenetrable for this army. It needs to then start getting Siege Cruisers. Okay, so we are seeing the Retributor go to the left instead, maybe going for a cutoff. There's two Sentinels and a Barrager. That's, that's, it's gonna do some damage, but it isn't uh, impervious. Not for the, the Retributor. A weird use of uh, saboteurs. I don't know why he did that then. Someone's pinging me on Discord and I haven't got it muted, so my mistake. Yeah, he's charging directly into these units, the base defenses. 
It's gonna be too late to return now. Oh man, that's a that's a big waste. That nullify is expensive. Now, now the retributor doesn't have any nullification, and this and a massive army going for the flank. Also building is that a that's a, a uh, Prometheus rather. That's a dreadnought destroyer, so that can take out the retributor. We are also seeing a massive quanta income advantage. Oh, here comes a big Punisher wave. There is some anti-air, however. So he has to keep clear of this army. There's, what, four Apollos? That's a good number. They have splash damage, and they get critical mass pretty fast. I think this Retributor is heavily outnumbered. Maybe we will have some ability usage, because there is a heavy amount of... of quanta. Five quanta per second, only 1.25 for uh, Pethidine. So with that quanta, you can use that to upgrade units with um, passive health or damage bonuses. You can deploy orbital abilities like the Drone Swarm, the uh, the, the Orbital Strike, um, Regeneration Orbitals. So I think this Retributor needs to just retreat, consolidate with the Overmind, because on its own it's going to get picked off. This army is going to help, but not by much. There's just too many units here, and especially given how many Nemesis Cruisers there are. There's so many of them. They could probably take it out in two bursts, maybe three. And look, going for a flank here as well. Looking to sandwich this Retributor. Is he going to pull the trigger? Will he commit to this fight? Support cruisers are being picked off. There's the drone swarm. With the Apollos though, they can take out those drones. Retributor is engaging now, but all the army is committing to this one. Serpentine turrets deployed. It won't help by much. Nemesis cruisers is still picking off for the supporting units, but now it's mostly just the Retributor on his own. Shields have been depleted, and that's the bulk of the hit points, so there it goes. Here comes the air units, but too late. Still have these Apollos raining them down from the ground. Raining up. <laughs> that analogy failed. <laughs> anyway, what also failed was that Retributor. Or at least, he got a fair bit of units, so it wasn't... It wasn't completely worthless, but... Still, I think, a bit better there for Pethidine. Also still has the... Has the lead in... I guess it's pretty even, actually. Bethadine has more metal income, however, Kinlock has more radioactives. But that quanta income makes a big difference in the long term. That late game... Um, the late game definitely is important for those those upgrades. Overmind is going to be huff t uh, tough to use. I tried saying hard and tough at the same time, and I said huff. My brain does that sometimes. <laughs> It'll be tough and hard to use against all these Apollos, because again, those Apollos shoot down drones, and the Overmind is mainly a drone platform. And also, there's a Prometheus on the field, that can take the over Overmind out, so... I am getting a little concerned here for Kinlock. Beth and I, I think, just has too much stuff. He has an amazing defensive line across the set, after the north, rather. The south, uh, not quite there, but it's, it's getting there. That's the defensive line. This one's actually pretty strong, too. Look at this, he's got a Disruptor Cannon, Tier 3 defense. Exterminator turret, a heavy anti-dreadnought defense. This may work. Maybe. Drone Swarm goes in. Now, the Drone Swarm is going to help with the Overmind because the Apollo can't target both. Yeah, more abilities are being deployed here. Buying some time. Actually, yeah, that makes a big difference because then the Nemesis and the Athenas, they all turn to engage those, those saboteurs. Serpentine turret, probably unnecessary, but now there's the... Prometheus supported by a whole swarm of Nemesis Cruisers. The Overmind definitely cannot take this fight. He has to disengage right now from this one. Overmind also can disengage quite well because the drones fire while moving, but this is exactly the wrong thing to do. Yeah, he he realizes it now. He is panicking and retreating backwards. Meanwhile, the, the drones are firing. The drones are good in an indirect fight. The Nemesis Cruisers are actually quite fragile, so this is a really good engagement. But if the Prometheus catches up, it will not go well for that Overmind. Pethidon getting a big swing in income, having all four generators. But yeah, nice cleanup. Also getting some levels. Level 2 on the Overmind. Does get experience for everything killed nearby. Which is exactly what these drones are doing. It is based on health though. And given that the Nemesis don't have a lot of health, you don't get a lot of experience. But still, it is nice. I don't know what upgrade he has. Probably an extra Drone Swarm. You get five drone swarms on the uh, Overmind by default. Or is it like a four plus an anti-air? Yeah, it's four plus an anti-air swarm. And then you can upgrade to get another one. 
Uh, also has a Retributor Dreadnought now, building some heavy cruisers, the Eradicators, so a good army. But the economy is, is perhaps a problem. Well, Punishers are going in. That's a lot of air units, and there's no anti-air. Oh, man. Doesn't even have any air superiority fighters, the the uh, Furies, to shoot down these, these units. So I think Pethodine is just throwing away units at this point. Well, not throwing away, but going to be losing units. He, he wasn't prepared for that. Overcommitting a little bit. Uh, some Apollos are moving in now, so they're going to be good, but there's actually a lot of Punishers. And these ones are going to be caught off by the the Dreadnought army. Yeah, just looking to snipe these ones down. Punishers pulling back. Interesting. I'm not going to commit to finish off the, the Dreadnought. There is a Constable, but that's only a tier 1 anti-air, so that's pretty weak. You really want to upgrade that one. Get some Falcons. Falcon Splash anti-air, the Flak anti-air, very, very powerful. But yeah, good snipes here. Just finding some, some free units to kill out of range of this Prometheus. A very good positional game. Oh, really good. He almost level 3 on the Overmind. Prometheus only level 1. No experience whatsoever. Now he's committing to this one. Let's see if this is a good idea. Punishers have extra damage. Also, some Maulers will help as well. Eradicator is going to be joining the fight. That's the nullification. Not sure who that one is from. The Overmind is getting quite low, as is the Prometheus. Has level 3 now, gets the shield ability. There's the Nanite Destruction. Takes out the Prometheus. Beautiful use of that ability. But still, Overmind isn't out of trouble just yet. Still very low. Cruisers are being rallied in, and there's a Hyperion on the field. That one's not quite as good against Dreadnoughts as the Prometheus, but it doesn't have to be when that Overmind is very, very low. Also, he's teleporting units in with the Gateway ability. So you can deploy Gateway on, on any unit. And that unit becomes like a portal where you can deploy reinforcements. A very powerful ability. Quite expensive, however. And if he loses the Overmind, that ability also goes down. So, I don't know if attacking is the right move here, given how weak it is. But that being said, we are seeing a Leonidas being built. That is a, a heavy Juggernaut. A, dre a Dreadnought Destroyer. Or even a Juggernaut Destroyer, you could, you could call it. Very good versus other Dreadnoughts. Very good against other Juggernauts, even. Uh, but this, this Overmind is just too low. It really can't stick around here, or at least it can't be in the front. It shouldn't be leading this, the, the fight, because then it just gets picked off. I think maybe uh, panicking here, he sees that Leonidas being built, but it's a long way off. Pethodine also out of Quanta. The, the Juggernauts do cost Quanta as well as pr both resources. Oh, this is so cheeky. Look at this. Artillery posts being used here to siege the, the army. Siege the base, even. I think the main thing that Pethodine needs is some Sentinels. Just get some base defenses, because that'll stall. But this, I like how the Retributor is actually going for the flank. It means he'll be able to secure extra income, which right now he needs. Uh, the Overmind. He should pull this one back. It's going to get focused down very fast. His Nemesis, they have so much burst damage. Hyperion now leading the charge. Eradicators are firing, but the Hyperion is taking some damage also. Punish is going for a bombing run. Drops another drone swarm. Both Dreadnoughts are very low. The Harbinger's in the sky. That's a heavy bomber. That does so much damage. to so Down goes the Hyperion. Using the shield regeneration ability by the looks of it here. Getting the shields up on the... The Overmind. All the units, in fact. Dropping another Serpentine turret. Those drone hives are OP. <laughs> oh, man. I think that's GG here. Because there's no... There's not enough air defense. There's only the Constables. And those are pretty weak. Yeah, I think the problem there, Pethodine, if he had a, if he had a Falcon, the Falcon would have taken out the drones quite effectively. The Sentinels would have done very well, especially. I mean, it was close. If it wasn't also for that, that it was really good. Um, uh, that's right, the, the Nanite Assassination. That's what the ability is called the the like the, the lightning strike. Almost it looks like that uh, took out the Hyperion in the end. Whereas if there were there was supporting orbitals from Pethodine, that would have made a big difference too, like the. The carving turret, for example. GG, that was a very nice game. Pethodine having more income for pretty much the entire game. Or at least at the end he had a lot more income, but yeah, couldn't hold the line. Just needed more base defenses. Base defenses are so good against uh, Dreadnoughts. And then, like, kind of the way that you have to deal with base defenses. Needed more base defenses. Because then if you get a bunch of base defenses, it, it just forces your opponent to go... For the artillery cruisers, like the destructors, the anti-air does not work. Uh, Falcons work better. Also, carving turret, nice. 